Wow, come on, praise him tonight. Look at your neighbor and say, are you desperate for Jesus tonight? Come on, tell them, are you desperate for Jesus tonight? And if they said no, bring them to the front. Because we want them to make sure that they're desperate for Jesus. And if they didn't answer you, say it again. They might not have heard you. I just believe. Amen. Give another shout out for Jesus. Now give another shout out for your pastor that's right here. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But thank you anyway. Go ahead and just have a seat. Make sure you say hello to your neighbor. I love you all. God bless you. Great to have you all in the house on a Wednesday night. I want to welcome everyone that's joining us online. God bless you. Great to have you in the house. Amen. Always good. Always good. Amen. God is good. How many of you guys come expecting? How many of you guys and ladies come expecting tonight? I'm always expecting. You know what? I am loaded all the time. So praise God. And if you ain't loaded, get with me after service. And I'll have a special meeting with you just to see what's the hindrance. I'm not kidding, for real. You know, I shouldn't say I'm just kidding. But we're always ready, huh, Apostle? We're always ready right, to cast out something, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Those of you that are joining online, it's okay. You're not here. But, you know, welcome. we welcome you every day, every Wednesday, every Saturday, every Sunday. We're here for you. So, amen, we always are available. Just want to make a couple of announcements while you're getting your seed ready, because I don't have to be telling FFL to get your seed ready, because we are a seed-showing church. I know I am, and you know, I see increase in my life. So, you know, let me be the first. I already done sow my seed, if you don't know. I already done sow my seed because, you know what, increase comes to me daily. Daily. It's always coming to me daily. And you know what, we need to make sure we always get that right. You don't have to wait. And, you know, these buckets are here. I just want to clarify some things. These buckets are here for you. You don't have to wait. You know what you need to do. You know, if you expect God to meet your needs, how desperate are you? I mean, come on. He don't have to keep telling you to do it. All you got to do is follow the book. Follow the book. We set credit cards in the back. We have uh, cash or check, whatever it may be, FFL. Those of you that are joining online, my precious daughter did the website. You make sure and there's a little tab up at the top that says give. Make sure you do that as you enjoy this, this time with us today. But just make sure always ready, always ready. Just a couple of announcements I'm going to make real quick once again. Tomorrow is Thursday, and tomorrow is our faith group Bible study. Correct? Where's my Billy? Where's my Yancey? Billy, son, right? Faith group, Bible, home Bible studies are starting tomorrow. That's on Thursday. Make sure you go. Make sure you have the church app. P Christian, make sure you put something up here with my church app. Make sure that you get my church app. How many of you are getting my announcements? Make sure you get them. Make sure if you're not getting them, get with me to see if you got something right, because you may have a different church. And we don't want you showing up somewhere else. But I just want to make sure that you're getting that, and that, that's where I put the address. Make sure that you go. It's always good to be able to just do something every single day. Uh, we always got something going on here. Um, and on Friday, we have the Estudio Biblico, that is for the Bible studies in Spanish. I also send the addresses then in Spanish. Make sure that you are attentive. And those of you that like Spanish, or if you just want to go, just to go, I'm okay with it too. The Lord knows English, the Lord knows Spanish, and the Holy Ghost can teach you. There's nothing wrong with that. And another thing, also remember this Saturday is our Mighty Wings Food Pantry. Give it up for the Food Pantry. Galveston Food Bank has been so amazing to us, and, you know, it's just a blessing, and they're always just blessed, and I just get real excited. You know, we've got people lining up here, and Charlie's always letting me know something, but, you know, this past couple of days, he ended up telling me, he said, you know, Pastor, they're asking, they're like, man, y'all are just amazing. I say, yeah, but you know what? I want them coming up here. If they say that's amazing, just wait till they get in service. You know, and it just, and it just, you know, they're they're wanting to know who your pastor is, and they done said some announcements that I was the pastor, and you know, they just really, they they really just enjoying that I'm out there. But you know what? We're an extension of Jesus. But the way they look at me, they look at you. So I just tell you, make sure that you're an extension of Jesus wherever you go. You know, wherever you go, you don't know what God's going to tell you to tell them. You know, it's always somebody. If somebody would have approached me before I had the accident, before I died. <laughs> You know, I would have said, I, I wouldn't have died. But you know what? It was, it, it was, I opened up that door. But the thing is, whose extension of Jesus can you be? You can be Jesus to someone. 
You know, it's very important that by the time you learn what you learn here and you get out them doors, don't be unreachable. Your pastor is very reachable. You can reach me. I'm a very approachable pastor. And if you don't know me, shame on you. You should know me. There's many of you and one of me. But you know what? I want you to also know if you haven't met your brothers and your sisters, make sure you get to know them one another. You know, because we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. And you know what? I would like to meet every one of you personally if I haven't. I know apostles the same way. But we want you to know that we are approachable. And just when you leave here, be an extension of who Jesus is because your name, Faith for Life Church, is all over you. So just make sure that what's embedded in you, you go out there and you share the gospel. Get out of these doors. It's not for you to sit pretty on these chairs every single time. It's for you to take what you learn here to take out there. You know, so we, I know Apostle does what he does and I do what I do, but you know what? You are who you are. But you know, I know you come to the house of God for a reason. You know, so just, let's just make sure and do that. But Mighty Wings Food Pantry is this Saturday. Those of you that are joining us online, anybody that wants to help with the food pantry, come at 7 o'clock. If you want to get, if you know somebody or you yourself may be in need of food at the moment, you just make sure to come at 8 o'clock. There's a line that gets started. All we ask that you come and bring proof of address, and then we just go ahead and just take you down the line. Make sure you bring a cart also or just a little bug or bag or something, right, Pastor Chris? A cart, a wagon, anything. Don't come, don't come with nothing. We try to do our best to have stuff for you to be able to take stuff with you in, but sometimes we just got to just throw it in the car. You know, just place it in the car, let me say. <laughs> well, sometimes we throw it right. Hey, hold on. <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> just kidding. Eh, just kidding. Sometimes it's just so hot out there. And you know what? Even if it rains, you come. A little rain ain't going to hurt nobody, you know. Double double bath. It's all right. It's, it's not a big deal. Um, so make sure you understand that is this Saturday. And then also we have... Um, Soul Sisters this Monday. Oh, my God. We have my ladies. Soul Sisters this Monday. Give it up for my mighty, mighty women. And uh, we're going to have it this Monday. I'm back up again to doing all that after all these wonderful conferences that we've been having. But make sure, ladies, you don't come empty-handed. You know, I just told somebody yesterday, I said, you know what we do? We had a meeting yesterday with leaders. And I tell you what, we, us ladies, fill the bar from this end to the other end. We load up that bar, and you know what? We just have a good time, you know? And, and I just tell you, please, ladies, if you have not came to a Soul Sisters meeting, make sure to get involved. It's fun. We have a lot of fun together. We just be able to just fellowship. We talk, and whatever the Lord has me share, I share. But I just tell you, we have a good time, and there ain't no limit. So don't be trying to cap my women, men, trying to tell them, come home by 11, because the children need you. No, you watch the children. My Lord, you watch the children. I know him watches the children. Don't be giving me a big old eye. And he goes, yeah, we're going to go to Top Golf. We're going to go to the movies. I said, do whatever you need to do. I said, but you know what? You got all four children. And the house better be clean. <laughs> and my two dogs, a boxer and little, and little Dodger. You know, I got the mic, Apostle, so just let, let me be. And the last thing I want to share with y'all is we have the church picnic. We have it. Come on, it's been a while. How many of all of y'all here have gone to a picnic that we've had a couple years, man? I miss my picnics. You know, Billy is going to be cooking the barbecue. Give it up for Billy because he does a great job. I know, you know, all the men like to be all hanging out. You know, I know Pastor Chris is going to be doing that as well. But we have all the information out here. I know I got a lot more people out there signing up. That, that, that are signed up, Every, it should be loaded. You need to make sure, if you come in on Wednesday church and you come in on Saturdays, you need to make sure that you go sign yourself up and you make sure you go. Just because we're not having church on Saturday on the 28th of, Jan, uh, of July does not mean you don't, come, you don't come to the picnic. Because you would be coming to church, come to the picnic. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. We're going to really rejoice and have a good... You can go ahead and start making your way up, up here, Apostle. Go ahead. Oh, come on, Pastor Chris. So make sure you get yourself signed up. Don't be concerned about any meat that's being taken care of. But make, make, please make sure to make the stuff that you need to make to bring. So we're excited for you. I know Pastor Chris is going to say a little something real quick, and then he's going to hand out the mic to Apostle.
Oh, praise God. But is it Wednesday or Saturday night? I don't know. So just, just a quick reminder. Um, you know, back to the food pantry. When you invite people to the food pantry, tell them to get here early. Okay, so we're established here. These people know about the food that we do every second Saturday. They are literally out there at 7 a.m. before we get here in line. We used to run till 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon trying to pass out all the food. We're maybe getting to 10, 30, 11 o'clock. So tell them, get here early. Don't roll up at 11 or noon and expect everything to be here. Amen? You know, I don't know. Is there anybody here for the first time visiting tonight? Any newcomers? Okay, praise God. Just a, just a, just a quick reminder. You know, the Sunday, the, the last day of the, the conference, uh, the Lord put it on Prophet Pringle's heart to announce the, the vacation that we're sending the Apostle and his family on. And, and I know you're not always going to remind me of this again. No, you know why we remind you? Or I, I remind you because the Lord put this on my heart. Is because, okay, so the Lord put something in your heart to sow toward that, okay? Many of you put it in the offering. Many of you might be holding on to an offering envelope in faith. Now, I would encourage you, if you're still holding on to that envelope, go ahead and put it in because you're still holding it. Amen? Throw it in there. That's the action for faith. But the reason I remind you is because when the Lord puts something on your heart to sow a seed, and it's in faith at that time, and you don't have it to put in there right now, as more time goes by, the enemy is going to work against that seed, and he's going to tell you there's other things that you need that for. Well, we got this bill coming up. We got that bill coming in, and what's going to happen is you're going to miss the harvest on that. So remember, we are still sowing that seed toward that trip through the end of the month because we want to bless them and send them on September. That's the last time those ships run through Alaska. Otherwise, it's next year. So there's a very small window. So I encourage you, if you're holding that envelope, if it's in faith, put the amount on there, drop it in there. When the Lord gives you that provision, sow that seed. Plant that thing in the ground. Amen? All right, y'all ready? You ready, man of God? You want that? You got it. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Father, we just give you glory and honor. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just give you glory and honor. We bless your name. Father, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing, oh God. And this night, this, this night, midweek service, oh God, we ask you, Father, that you just do what you want to do, Lord. Have your way. Lord, we yield to the Holy Ghost. We yield to the spirit of the living God. And Father, I thank you that every heart here is a heart of good soil. And their heart is open and alert to receive your word, God. And they shall see it produce before their eyes. Oh, God, they'll see the fruit of the word of the Lord in their spirit coming alive in the natural. Which your word declares that the word put on flesh and dwelt among us. And God, we thank you that the word, the seed of the word that is sown into our heart of good soil, it produces a manifestation of the word on the outside. And for that, we give you thanks, oh God. We are in faith and expectation, knowing that what you say, that is what it is. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, I'm going to just give you a, a, a scripture. Uh, I got a couple things I want to share with you, but I want to give you a scripture to sow in. Amen. Are you ready? If you've already sowed your seed, just listen to the word. Glory to God. You can mute all that behind me, please. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to read you Jeremiah. That's where we're going to go. We're going to go to Jeremiah. Real quick, just take me Jeremiah 29, 11, but in the Amplified. And then um, I'll give you another scripture here in a little bit. Jeremiah 29, 11. If you get there before me, praise God. I'm on my way. Are you blessed tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 11. But in the Amplified, it says, For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. 
plans for peace and well-being, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call on me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear you. I will hear your voice and I will listen to you. Then with a deep longing, you will seek me and require me. Somebody say, I require him. As a vital necessity. And you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will restore your fortunes. Somebody say, he's restoring my fortunes. He's restoring what belongs to me. Somebody say, he's restoring what belongs to me. Right now, the Lord is restoring. Right now. Because you require him as necessity. You have need of the Lord like never before. And your need is causing you to seek after him. Amen. And while you're seeking after him, <laughs> that drawing is actually restoring your fortunes. Because let me tell you, when you begin to really know how much you need God, you really begin to seek him. And when you really begin to seek him, that's when instructions begin to take place. And when instructions begin to take place, answers begin to show up. Oh, my God. And he said, I'll be found by you. <laughs> I mean, no, we're going to find him. I know, I know we understand that he found us, but... Now that he found us, we need to go looking for him. Uh, I'll help you with that later. So, and he said, I'll restore your fortunes. Fortunes. How many are getting fortunes restored to them? I mean, money's just, I mean, like, like you used to be on a certain level. Now you got to pay more taxes. You know what I mean? Don't worry about it. That's a good thing. People fret, oh, I got to pay more taxes because my, my money went up. Well, what happened when you didn't have no money? <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a good time tonight. <laughs> so lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we thank you that as we know how, how much we need you as a necessity in our life, like the air we breathe, the water we drink, oh, God, Father, we thank you that we seek you, we search for you, and you speak to us, you minister to us, God. And, and part of that is sowing. You teach us how to sow, what to sow, where to go, what to do, God. And in that, there's a restoration of the fortunes, restoration of financial blessing, restoration of increase, restoration of wealth and prosperity in our life, oh God. For that, we give you thanks and glory and honor today. And so we sow in faith and we'll reap a harvest in faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. So you see, worship the Lord. Real Oh! 
Thank you for the opportunity to sow and give into your system in which you set up for your children, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that when we tithe and when we offer, oh God, your word declares in the book of Malachi, in that you open up windows of heaven and you pour out a, 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 a blessing upon your people, oh God, in which your word says we are unable to contain. Father, we thank you for our open heaven. We thank you for ideas, innovation, ways of doing things. We thank you for fruit. Favor, 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 favor. Father, we thank you for contracts, contracts, promotions, increase, multiplication. Father, we thank you for hidden riches in secret places, oh God, that not only do you provide our need, oh God, that you do abundantly above all that we ask or even think, oh God. Hey, 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 what a man sows, that and only that shall he reap, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for eyes to see the harvest in which belongs to us today. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody shout thank you. I'll never be broke another day in my life. I'll never be broke another day in my life. All my bills are paid. All my debts are retired. Money just keeps on coming to me. Hey, the blessing of the Lord is upon me. And he blessed me to be a blessing to others. And I increase. I increase. And I increase. And I increase. And, I increase, and there is no lack in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, shout amen. Why don't you give your neighbor a high five? Tell him, I'm so glad you're with me in this blessed place. In this place of great blessing, great joy, and great increase. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we releasing the children? Oh, the children can go to their classes. Are there? Oh, thank you, sir. Amen. Are you blessed today? Amen. Well, I, I have a word for you. I uh, want to share the word of the Lord with you. Amen. Hallelujah. I rearrange some books here. Glory to God. I want you to go Romans 10. You know, God is so amazing. My God is so amazing. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I, yeah, I know what I was going to tell you. You know what I was going to tell you? I was going to tell you. I was going to tell you. I was going to tell you. I was going to tell you <laughs> that you're going to pray more than you ever prayed before in your life. <clears throat> you're going to hear God like you never heard God before in your life. God's going to lead you like you've never been led before in your life. Things are going to make more sense to you according to the word of God like never before. Your level of understanding will be... Ugh. That's how I can explain it, you know. The level of understanding of the word of God is going to be supersede your understanding. Like yesterday, like I didn't understand that, but today it just fits. I, see, because I, I think we work so hard naturally to get something that is spiritual. But we don't sit long enough in the Holy Ghost to receive what we'll never get by the natural man. And so we need the deposit of the Holy Ghost to open up our understanding and just know. See, what, what, what we have to gain the revelation is, is that God did not explain himself to Adam. God didn't sit down with Adam and explain himself. He said, Adam, wake up. And then the next conversation they have is Adam, name the animals. And the Bible says that God brought all the animals in front of Adam. And Adam gave them life. When Adam spoke, that thing received life. It wasn't alive until it got its name. Oh, yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
My question is, who explained God to Adam? Oh, let's go one further. What about Abraham? Who explained God to Abraham? We've turned this thing into an educational system instead of a revelation. Because people have gotten, don't get mad at me because not you, because you're here, you work, I mean, look how long you worship my God on a Wednesday. <laughs> but people by nature tend to fall into this place called lazy. Until desperation sets in, then lazy gets kicked out. Desperation comes in and like, God, I can't handle this no more. I got to know you. Then God starts revealing himself. Amen. And so we have to change our way of receiving. Because what you get from God is not like you got from your biology teacher. The Bible says he wanted to write his laws on your heart. In other words, let me supersede your mentality and go right to your heart. If I can go right to your heart, your mind will take a back seat. But what we've done is taken the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is a supernatural gospel, and we've made it an education. Take me back there, Father. So we turned it into an education. We left Revelation, and we just walked by education. So my question is, how soon will you become like Enoch through an education? Well, the Bible says him and God walked together, and he disappeared. My question is, how quick, how long are you going to be educated till you become like an Enoch? We'd have to live for another 900 years. And we might not make Enoch, you know, like, who knows? So, how do we get it, Lord? Yeah, I, I got you. I'm shaking man name. I say, hey, shake So we've turned this into an education, right? And, and there's nothing wrong with education because education is for the five senses. It's for this guy. Go ahead, tap yourself on the shoulder. Education is for this guy. Because if you didn't have an education on how to eat, you'd be dead. <laughs> you'd be starving, you know what I mean? <laughs> but education taught you that you got to eat some food or you won't go live. But a revelation tells you, I need God. I need God. And God is not far from me. He's not far from me. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, what I was saying was, <laughs> is that you're going to pray like you never prayed before. You're going to understand like you never understood before. Because it comes. It comes. It, it comes. Open up the eyes of my understanding, the scripture says. Hold on. I thought educate my eyes so I can understand. No, no, no. That's not the prayer that Paul prayed. Paul said, hey, hey I pray huh? that God would open up your eyes, the eyes of your understanding. That means understanding has eyes. It's, I'm talking about spiritually. Listen, there are things you know you don't even know how you know. Nobody taught you. You just, I don't know how to do it. I just know how to do it. Where'd you get it from? Who educated you? I'll give you one more. Who taught you how to dream? I don't know about you. I don't school my children on a, let me teach you. You just go to sleep. Mm, and, then, mm, and then you have a dream. Who taught you how to dream? It's a part of you. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there is so much given to you. But you can't get it by education. 
Listen, the Bible was written not by education, but by the Bible says the Holy Spirit inspired, not educated. So when we, we stop being a spirit people and we become an educational system, we have rejected God and we eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And we leave the tree of life because the spirit is life. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is wonderful, isn't it? Amen. So my question is, okay, now how do you get from learning about God to encountering him, walking with him? How? How do you get from here where God exists? Wow. I need to know him. It's called faith. Faith is not an education. Listen, I can take two different people, two different people, one that is willing and desires to know God and one that just wants to know God. One that's just like, oh, I just, yeah, I just, I just want to do the religious thing. I can take that person and get nothing done with them. I can take a person that says, I'm just hungry. And in a heartbeat, your eyes will, will be wide open. Why? Because everything I have received, I have received by revelation. God, God deals with us in these things. But because we lean so heavy on education, we pass off revelation. Huh? You know, the world calls it intuition. And the world ain't got no problem with intuition. You know why the church... Got a problem with inspiration. Being inspired by the Holy Ghost. That means he puts something in you and you're like, I don't know why. I just, I got to pray right now. I don't know why. I just got to worship right now. I don't, I don't understand. I don't need to understand. I just know there's somebody on the inside of me that is on fire, that is drawing me close. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So the work is to get you from I believe in Jesus to becoming Jesus. That's the, that's the work. And so what does that work entail? By speaking to you about a God that is in the realm of impossibilities. Because this scripture right here, let me just, let me just give you the ones he dropped in me while I was asleep this morning. <laughs> he talked to you while you sleep. Yeah, because my spirit don't sleep. You think I move when I preach? <laughs> I move when I sleep, Bobby. Hey, uh, this is Romans 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So you can't call on somebody you don't believe in. Huh? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Somebody say preach. Preach what? Preach things they ain't never believed before. Biblical things. Get, don't get me wrong. Biblical things. Things that are established in the word of God. Preach those things in which the people have never believed before so that they can believe. Why we want to preach education? Why am I going to give you something that's easy to believe? What's the point? You don't need me. If you can believe it, you don't need God. Welcome, welcome, welcome home, welcome home, welcome home. 
<laughs> and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are? Oh, you better, you better read that word, S-E-N-T. I think it's the next verse, isn't it? 15, y'all, hello. How shall they preach except there's a whole lot of preachers that were never, never, ever got the letter. Listen, when you join the military, baby, if they're going to call you up to go to war, you get a notification. And you can't say, well, you know, uh, mama, I don't want to go. He's going to say, uh, son, they sent the letter. You've got to be at this place at this time and packed and ready to roll. Because the army called you. So how they, they can't go on their own. I ain't never seen a soldier say, I'm going to go by myself. I joined the army to go to war, so I'm going to go by myself. <laughs> They're going to arrest you anyway. But in reality, we have a lot of people that have sent themselves. And so when they send themselves, they only give you themselves. Oh, yeah. oh. So how should they preach except they be sent? I'm coming with you, man. Have you ever been involved or done stuff? You know, you're like, oh, I like that. I want to do that. And you do that, and then later you're like, I mean, why I do that? I mean, it's like you, you start, like you just want to work at the bakery, you know, and you go to work at the bakery, and then you're there like, I shouldn't have worked at the bakery. <laughs> like, why did I even go to the bakery? I'm not even cut out for the bakery, you know what I mean? But then you just keep working there because you're faking it now. Because if I quit, you know I ain't going to have a job. I ain't going to make no money. <laughs> and ain't nobody ever sent you to go work at the bakery. You sent yourself. Now everybody's suffering because you, you sent yourself. And you ain't got nothing. You can't even bake. My God. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Listen, that peace is the peace between God and man. What Jesus did on the cross to, to defeat sin. Because when you look at this, oh, I don't want to get into it, Lord Jesus. I, I, I'll wait for another day. No, I, got a, I, got, I got an assignment. I got a, I got, because we think this, this was a gospel of peace. We think it's like peace, love, and crabs. And we don't understand that we are an occupying army in another kingdom sent by a kingdom to come minister the gospel in which there is a war. It is called a peacekeeping mission. That's why Paul said you better be fully armored for a peacekeeping mission. So it says who bring glad tidings of good things. Yeah, yeah, I got good things. Glad tidings that you'll never be broke another day in your life because there is a spiritual revelation about to hit you. Oh, you don't even under, you don't have to understand how. I don't, I don't care how. It don't matter how. Hey, all I know is he did it for me. Help me, Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost like, ah. Hey, but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So ain't everybody, ain't everybody all, all of them, you know, he said, not all of them have obeyed the gospel. Somebody say, uh oh, but here's the message. Go to the next verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the only way you're going to believe something. 
or believe in him is first hear about him. You got to take that to the next level now. Now that you believe there is a God and you don't sit around and wonder, I wonder if God exists. Now let's take it to where he just doesn't exist, but he manifests. But he doesn't just exist somewhere. I believe in God. I believe in the son of God. But now I need to know him. I don't just believe in him. I, I need to know him. I need to know him on a daily basis in which when I have an issue, I take it before him and he ministers to me and he gives me direction. I say, Lord, I need to know what to do about this or, or this circumstance. And he, 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 he ministers to you. So, but faith comes by hearing. You have to believe that God wants to be in every day of your life to show you, to lead you, to talk to you. It's not just for preachers. Because most preachers don't hear God in the first place. Go ahead, get mad at me. I'm talking to them on Facebook, not y'all. But most preachers can't hear God. That's why I don't hang around a lot of preachers. I hang around people who hear God. So I can say, hey, what's the Lord talking to you about? And if they can't hear, I just hang around with my girls, you know, and my wife. I'd be like, what's the Lord say? Oh, he said this, this, and that. Oh, that's him. Bam. Amen. I mean, my God, when Jesus walked around on the planet, do you think his disciples said, what did Jesus just say? <laughs> can you imagine? He's walking with him through the field, you know. And he, he, he says something to John. And then Mark said, hey, hey, John, what did Jesus say? And he said, Jesus just said this. Do we do that? Because that's how real he needs to be with us. What Jesus talking to you about right now? What's he saying to you right now? What does he have for you right now? What's he doing in you right now? Right now? Right now? What is he saying? What is he ministering to you? What is he showing you? This is the reality of Christianity. Mm. So, but if we don't hear this, we, we don't believe it. So we accept just a mundane reality, which ain't no good. Because it's not the reality of heaven. This is something that I had to wake up to after 20 something years in church. My wife drove me while I was gone. I was gone. God touched me, laid me out. I was gone. I couldn't walk, could barely talk, crying, messed up. And I'm calling out to God while she's driving me down the road. And he just spoke like, like my father father was sitting in the back seat and I said wow and I'm racking my brain like what in the world took me 20 something years of Christianity to hear my father's voice what have I been taught and I learned that he wouldn't be quiet <laughs> I learned he don't want he don't want to be quiet it's like you never spoke to your dad and your dad never spoke to you for 20 years and then you meet. All he wants to do is talk about what he did, how he is, what's going on, how you are, every, everything. What I got for you, man, I missed 20 years of your life. Let's make it up. I was wondering how in eight months I left everything. We said, come on, baby, we gone. We left everything. Eight months. From one encounter, walked away from everything, walked away from everybody, and followed the unction of the Spirit. Hey, hey, but I got to help you, and nobody really educated me. I said, how is it that nobody educated me? Oh, my God, Jesus. Shafto Rebeshika. So faith comes by hearing. Amen. Somebody say it's coming right now. My faith is growing. Your faith is growing right now. That God wants to talk to you about the next bill you're supposed to pay. You don't just sit there and write a check to the bill. God wants to talk to you about that thing. I know some Christians don't believe all that because they don't got all that. I want to give you something you need that everybody else ain't got because they don't believe it. You know, they think God is an absentee God. He just... 
whenever he wants to, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years, he might speak to me. I imagine if we had father-daughter relationships that I won't speak to my daughter for 30 years. How messed up that would be. I mean, we pass each other in the house, this house, and no conversation is ever held. This is the gist of Christianity. Why? Because no preacher ever told you God wants to talk to you morning, noon, and night. Every time you eat, God wants to talk to you. Every time you go to brush your teeth, my God, God shocked me one day. I woke up in the morning, I was brushing my teeth, minding my business, you know. My wife asleep. I'm brushing my teeth. I don't know. I just got the unction to get up. I'm brushing my teeth. I heard the Lord say, if you honor me, I'll honor you. I said, what? Who said that? And I was foaming, you know what I mean? (laughs) Foaming at the mouth, you know? But it wasn't the devil, so you're all right. It was Colgate, you know? (laughs) Come on, Lord. (laughs) And I learned that God wanted to talk to me about everything. Everything. I have conversation with my children about everything. I mean, everything. Within reason. And everything. Whatever they ask me, I'm like, yeah, we'll talk about it. Amen? I'm minding my business. He said, if you honor me, I'll honor you. I said, deal. Deal. <laughs> deal. I'll honor you in every way. In everything, I'll honor you. God said, I'll always honor you then. Settled. Isn't that amazing? got to settle some things with God. Amen. So faith comes by hearing. Amen. Let's look at Hebrews 11.1. Are you blessed today? Isn't he wonderful? Better and better every day. I'm telling you every day it gets better and better. The more you, 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 your, your understanding opens about how much God is wanting to be involved in your life. You say, why can't he? Why doesn't he? I'm a Christian. Why doesn't he just be involved in every part of my life? I'll give you one reason. Well, I'll give you a couple reasons. (laughs) I'll help you like this. I cried out to God one day. I said, God, I don't understand why our relationship is such a wreck. My children's lives, this is when I heard him speak to me. And when I heard him speak to me, I thought, man, God, I could ask you anything. I need help. And so for me, it was like all my expectations of like, wow, everything is finished, man. Everything's over. All my issues over. You ever want to feel that way? I mean, I'm asking you, don't, don't you want to feel that way? That, my God, every answer you need is available to you. That moment I felt like every answer I ever needed, right then was, it was just a clean, oh, I, I can't even explain it to you, my God. There you go. I can explain it that way. It was just like everything in life just opened up. And I began to talk to him about every issue in my life, everything I faced, every circumstance, every detail. And I asked him why these things were. And he put his finger in my face and he said, it's your fault. These are some things Christians don't want to hear. They don't want to hear. It's their fault. If God did everything for you already at the cross, then there are things you face that are your fault. We got to wake up to it. But the good news is he will guide you through it. He won't leave you in it. When you recognize, this is why repentance is so beautiful to say, man, Lord, I missed it. I messed up. Forgive me. And then God say, okay, this is what you need to do to get out of it. So he stuck his finger in my face and he said, it's your fault. I said, why is it my fault? I mean, how has it become my fault? I'm just being real. I was like, what? He said, because you're not the king, you're not the priest, nor are you the prophet of your home. And then he said something profound that I never heard in my life. He said, whatever you allow, I have to allow. I said, well, hold hold on, you God. He said, yes, I am a sovereign God, but you are a sovereign being. I'll mess you up quick. 
You're a sovereign being. In other words, if you make up your mind that you'll reject Christ, God cannot save you. This is what Christians don't understand. This, 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 this peace, love, and crabs gospel that we got. We don't understand that we do things and deny him and he can't touch that until we surrender it. It's simple principles of salvation. You can't be saved unless you believe and confess. And confession is invitation. Come on now. So if it works for salvation, why doesn't it work for everything else? It's principle. It works the same way. So when we are like, oh, God, I don't know why you don't do this and why you don't do that. He said, because you're in the way. You're blocking me. Oh, yeah, see, you're quiet, man. This is revelation. This will help you. Because when the door is closed, you're like, Lord, help me. You're perfect. I'm not. You're perfecting me. So I must be missing something. And the day we say I'm missing something is the day we open up for revelation. And revelation show up quick. And so he told me it's your fault. And so I accepted responsibility. Somebody say just accept it. <laughs> Once you accept responsibility, don't you tell your children that? We teach, we teach our children, be responsible. If you broke it, told, tell me. I didn't break it. It was like that. Well, guess what? I can't help you. And then we want God to help us, and we won't fess up. We won't fess up. We want God to help me, God. Lord, heaven, you know, all this. If God say, fess up. Realize that you're the one standing in the way. It's your fault. Somebody say, ain't no condemnation in Christ. That's right. That's where repentance comes in and removes it all. Washes it away. Puts you right on the right path. These are issues that we don't deal with. Things that we need to understand. God wants you to understand. Because he wants victory in every area of your life. God's plan is victory for you. Oh, my God. It's victory for you. So the gospel is that relationship now is in your heart. And what is a relationship? It's a two-way street, isn't it? It's not one way, it's two. It's like marriage. Both people got to die. I'm preaching better than you amen, but that's okay. I don't preach for amen. So. But both people got to die. Or else that thing is not a melting together, is it? So when we got Christians that don't want to die, it ain't a melting. Jesus already died. It's up to us to now die. When we die now, we get out the way. When we're dead, we can't wait. What, what we got? We dead. We're like, Lord, you know, I, I messed that one up. I'm dead. Lord Jesus, I'm dead. Help me out. <laughs> and so, am I, are we all right? I didn't take you too far, did I? And so, when he told me, he said, son, you got to understand something. You have authority on earth. Let me ask you this. If Boshikama, how do I explain that, Lord? Could God have stopped Adam? Think about it. God's all-knowing. The Bible says from the foundation of the world, Jesus was already dead. Before Adam was ever made, Jesus was crucified. So do you think God could have said, Adam, don't do it. I arrest you, Adam. Don't touch it. No. Because he did it when he said, do not eat of that tree. The word was supposed to arrest Adam. Oh, Lord. 
Oh, we just hit a river. My God. We just went, woof. Hey. Huh? Now, there was nobody between Adam and God. Adam was perfect. And God couldn't stop him. Well, we're on this side. Well, hey, we were before sin. Oh, oh. oh see, we throw the Old Testament, we throw, we throw it out, but that was before sin. God still couldn't stop him because the word was supposed to arrest him. But he didn't let the word arrest him. He let another word guide him out. Mm. This is why the word is so important. This is why the word of God must be in us and on us. That faith is alive, so it arrests us. It guides us. It lifts us. Oh, Listen, I mean, you think God made Adam in his image and likeness. Why couldn't he say, hey, Adam, I know you're going to eat that tree. So let me jump in the middle of it. But he didn't do it. Why? Because Adam had dominion. He had authority. Just like you and me. You have authority over your own life. Amen. So God cannot come and force you to do anything. Amen. God can't even fix your mistakes until you say, I messed up. He cannot just come in and fix something that he has no legal right to fix. I don't know how we got there. We there now. Did y'all ever find Hebrews 11? Okay. But this is what we need to understand as believers. Why? Because we wrestle against God more than we think. Because God wants to help us. He already sent the help and did the work. Now he wants to take the work of the cross 2,000 years ago and instill it every day in you. Every day. But he can't do it without you having faith for it. Somebody say, I need faith. That means you need to hear a message you ain't never heard before. And then the messages you have heard, you need to hear them again. And again and again and again and again to keep your faith clean. Oh. Okay. So Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen. Evidence of things not seen. Amen. Not seen. It is heard first. Amen. Then it's seen. In other words, let me help you. Um. Faith is imparted into you by words. The word, when, you're, when, when, when you are hearing the word of the Lord, faith is imparted into you. And that faith that is imparted into you produces a vision. Produces a vision in you. And it must be heard. Because the Bible says the mind is at enmity with God. So the mind doesn't capture faith, but your spirit does. So what we need to deal with is our mentality. We must allow the word to get in us. When it gets in us here, it has no visual. I hath not seen, <laughs> nor ear heard. What is he talking about? This one and this one, naturally. 
prosper. Faith produces a vision when you receive it in your spirit. But faith only comes by hearing a word that you've never heard before. Are you here? So if we're speaking things that are believable to the mentality, they're not faith. Ay, 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 Oh, yeah, it's not faith. The Bible says he'll do abundantly above all that you can ask or think, which means he goes beyond the realm of your reason. Because the reason is what trapped Eve and caused Adam to sin was reasoning. And in our churches, we, 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 we limit God when we live in a realm of reasoning. Well, that doesn't make any sense to me. Faith is not supposed to make any sense to you. <laughs> okay, let's, let's take you back to Jesus' day. Let me, let me, let me, let me, lay, lay down right there. Let's give him a bed. He need a bed. Well, you got, it's not like that. Like you're sleeping, man. No, the other, no, no, no. Just lay down, face the ceiling. All right, so he, he, here, hold on. Get on your bed. Just crawl, get on your bed. Face up, yeah, make your bed. Face up. Jesus goes. To the pool of Bethesda, and there are a multitude of people, and they're on five porches, and they're filled, they're filled with sick people, waiting for the angel to come and stir the water, and for them to be the first one to jump in to be healed. Does that make any sense in the first place? I don't see you jumping in a pool saying, "Ooh, I want my healing," because it makes no sense. So Jesus walks by everybody. Doesn't make any sense, does it? And he finds one man and he asks him, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? That question don't make no sense. Does it? You're at the pool of Bethesda. You sick, lame, broke, busted, and disgusting. Jesus passed everybody and asked you, do you want to be healed? Doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't ask that question. If you were a nurse, you say, we got any nurses in here? Y'all need to lay hands on the sick nurse folk. Nurses, stay there, son. You all right. Somebody come to the doctor. And the doctor say, what you want? You're like, I just want a cheeseburger. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. He's in a place for healing. And Jesus walk up and said, you, what you want? What you want? I imagine the guy's like, what everybody else around here wants. But it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and Jesus said, what? Take up your bed and walk. Does that make any sense to you? How did he get up? How did his healing come? How? How did he take up his bed and get out? Because it makes no sense how somebody whose legs have been lame. That's the gospel. It makes no natural sense. When we bring the gospel to a sensual place, it becomes a religion. Because mm. religion is based on your senses. This guy right here. Ah, somebody say, thank you, Lord. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the word of the Lord comes into you. You hear it. You receive it. Faith is produced. Through faith, now you see what you never saw before. 
Watch this. Now that it's heard, received, and now you see it, then you can understand it. Let me help you. Y'all, y'all, y'all writing notes? That's beautiful. What's interesting, look, mama, which way you writing? You're writing from left to right, aren't you? Every one of you write this way. Or left-handed, you still write from left to right. In Hebrew, it's right to left. So we have taught God left to right. They got him by right to left. <laughs> so we explain him backwards. I can close service right there like, phew. Everybody going to start writing opposite. But this is what we've, we've brought God to an explanation. And we teach him from left to right. But the spirit moves. For he is seated at the. So this is why he's not in education. And this is why if you say, well, I don't understand, Pastor. You didn't come to understand me. See, this is why I have to help people. That's why I got to help you. You don't come to understand me. Why are you trying to understand me? Just receive it. When you receive it, it produces an understanding. It produces. I mean, listen, you go home, you lay down, and, and all the word that you heard today just go. Bruh, 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 bruh. It's just going off on you, and you're shaking, and like, why can't I sleep? And, and then all of a sudden, I got it. That's how it works. We try to learn it without receiving it. We want to learn it and then receive it. God doesn't come that way. Tap your neighbor and say, God don't come that way. You don't learn God and then receive him. First he's heard. And the hearing is the receiving. That's why Jesus said statements like, he that hath an ear to hear, let that one hear. All the people trying to understand him. And somebody in the crowd going, ooh, I heard him. Because when you hear, when you're hearing it, it's producing. Uh, yeah. Hey, we went, to, we went to the Indian reservation together, man. I know this man of God. That brother can pray, man. That brother got up and prayed before I was the minister, and he prayed. Like, blah, 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 you shut me, I said, go ahead, man, go ahead. And angels started manifesting, man. <laughs> so when you're receiving it, when you're hearing it, it's getting into your receiver. In your receiver, it produces an image, or it releases faith. It releases the product of what you heard. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so what we struggle on is that we come to church like we're going to school. And then we want to learn about a supernatural God like we went to fifth grade math. Are you here? Yeah. No, your math is important so you don't <laughs> mess up on your, you know, <laughs> addition and subtraction. And and they people be robbing you because you were like, I'll give you fifty dollars, and they say, Well, here's ten cents. 
And you're like, okay, that's right. You know they do that in other countries when you go. When you go to another country and you, you pay them people, they're like, oh, yeah, I'll give you the right amount of money. You're like, you better know how to add. Mm. <laughs> Brother, you owe me 20 bucks, man. <laughs> that's where your education comes in real good. <laughs> you're like, yep, mm -hmm, that's $20 missing out of this right here. Yeah. <laughs> I said, am I right? You just got back from, you just got back from, a, <laughs> I ain't going to say where, but <laughs> a foreign country. <laughs> They see Americans coming, boy. Hey. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you receiving? Okay. I think I got enough foundation. I don't want to keep it too long. but So faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Let me, let me look at something here. Watch this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. When you look at that word hoped for, it's el, el, el pizzo. El pizzo. Man, y'all help me out, somebody. El pizzo. It is to wait for salvation with joy and full confidence. To wait for salvation with joy and and full confidence. This is what it what it comes from is expectation of good. So when you have faith, which is the substance of things hoped for, is really an expectation of good to be happening in your life. When you really have faith. You are believing the good that God has for you. I mean, like, everything's paid for. That's the good that God has for you. It's like everything in your body that used to hurt don't hurt no more. Like, my God, it don't hurt no more. Mom, I love you. We went to see my mom. When was it? Monday? Monday. Monday went down there. Mom, mom said, son, pray for me. I said, what's, what's wrong? She said, everything over here has just been hurting for months. I said, okay. I said, mm, wait a minute, got a little oil. I said, come here. In the name of Jesus, pow! <laughs> so thank God for Usher. Usher went with me, man. Bam! Mom hit the floor. I said, oh, Lord, Jesus. I'm glad he caught mom, you know what I mean? Mom hit the ground. Bam! Got her up again. I said, move, move, move. She moved. I said, hit in Jesus' name. Bam! She hit the floor. She got up. I called her the next day. She said, I feel good feel good. All that stuff in my neck, my arm left me. I said, that is what faith does. It takes you from broke to wealthy, from sick to healed, from death to life. And it's not by education. It's by faith, which is by revelation. Amen. Are you with me now? So I want to show you real quick now that you received that. Look, I want you to Acts Acts, Acts, somebody say Acts, somebody. <laughs> Y'all are the best. Acts, somebody. Acts 27. So you're going to pray like you never prayed before. I'm talking about in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about in the realm of heaven. Amen. You're going to worship like you ain't never worshipped before. You're going to receive like you never received before. You're going to understand what you never understood before. And so just so you know, right, while, while we're here, this is what we do. We pray, we worship, and we do it openly, which is what the church should do. They should not hide who they are. We should worship like we're supposed to worship. We should pray like we're, we're born to pray. And we should, we should shout like we're born to shout. I mean, you know what I mean? This is what the church, we can't hide no more. We're hiding Jesus. We're hiding our salvation. We're hiding our victory. So this is, this is Acts 27. I'm, I'm going to try to chop some of this up for sake of time. Oh, my shikere manga. So Paul is on a journey to see Caesar. 
And it says, uh, verse 1, and when it was decided that we should sail to Italy, they delivered Paul and some of the prisoners to one named Julius, a centurion of the Augustan regiment. So entering a ship of, of this, whatever this place is, we put to sea, meaning to sail along the coast of Asia. Oh, man, boy. Say that one? Go ahead. Uh-huh, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. Aristocrats. Um, <laughs> A Macedonian of Thessalonica, y'all, y'all got it, y'all got it. Oh, see, Mas go ahead, y'all, y'all, educated people. A Macedonia of Thessalonica was with us, and the next day we landed in Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly and gave him liberty to go to his friends and receive care. Now, don't forget, Paul was a prisoner, but Paul had favor as a prisoner. So when he had put to sea from there, he, we sailed under the shelter of Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea, which is off Sicilia, yeah, amen, hallelujah, and Pamphylia, I got that one, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. They There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing to Italy, and he put us on board. When we had sailed slowly many days and arrived with difficulty off this place, the wind not per permitting us to proceed. Y'all do it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all do it. The wind not permitting us to proceed. We sailed under the shelter of Crete off of Salomon. Passing it with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Havens near the city of Lycia. Paul's warning ignored. Verse 9. Now when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over. You're going to fast like you've never fasted before. Paul advised them, saying, men I perceive. Now, perceive. What does he mean, men I perceive? In other words, listen, there's something on the inside of me that is unctioning me that this thing is going to end in disaster. Was that by education? Somebody say the Holy Ghost. So I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much loss. Not only of the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. So Paul was in the realm of the spirit, recognized something that nobody else noticed. Oh, Jesus. Nobody else noticed it. Nobody else paid attention to it. Nobody else knew when they're going to get in that car, there is something waiting for them. But because Paul was a prisoner, he had to go with them. So nevertheless, verse 11, nevertheless, Centurion was more persuaded. Somebody say he was more persuaded. By the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by Paul. You know why? Because they didn't know the authority of Paul. They didn't know his position in the realm of the heaven. So they discounted what he was speaking and they were listening to carnal people. Somebody say, help us, Lord. Yeah. Listening to carnal people because of money. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised to set sail from there also. If by any means they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete opening toward the southwest and northwest and winter there. So they made a decision based on winter time and money. Because it was not safe to winter there. And then they had to get cargo somewhere. But Paul was not concerned about winter nor money. He was more concerned about what the spirit was saying to him. Somebody say this is, this is what we need to live like. This is what we need to live like. We're not concerned about, well, you know, summer, winter, you know, uh, uh, give me some more. Fall, spring, autumn, summer. Yeah, summer. We always in summer over here. <laughs> but we're not concerned about those things. We're not concerned about cargo, about money, about these things. We need to be more concerned about what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Amen. But we cannot do that without faith. Faith produces an unction of the Spirit in you. Education produces what these men said. No, we need to go this way. So what you're seeing, not saying that Paul didn't have an education. He was a very educated man. But 
he put his education on the shelf. Somebody help me. Are you here? Somebody say lean not on your own understanding. There you go. So now let's see. We just jumped down. Um, verse 14. It says, but not long after a tempestuous headwind arose called Eurycolidon. A, woo, go ahead, man of God. Basically a cyclone, a hurricane. So when the ship was caught and could not head into the wind, we let her drive and running under the shelter of an island called Claudia, we secured the skiff with difficulty. When they had taken it on board, they used cables to undergird the ship and fearing lest they should run aground on sit, sir, yeah, the sands, they struck sail and so were driven. And because we were exceedingly Tempest tossed. The next day they lightened the ship. Okay. So now everybody that was concerned about the cargo but wouldn't listen to the Holy Ghost is now losing their cargo. That means hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going we to take all these fancy things to grandma's house and we're going to take it on the boat. And the prophet said, this thing going to end in disaster, but you won't listen to the prophet. You'll leave your stuff on the ship. And now what was so precious to you, you got to throw out. I want you to understand that faith causes you to hear God. But education will cause you to lose all your stuff. And so. Amen. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. So on the third day, we threw the ship's tackle overboard with our own hands. Now, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. Wow. That means everybody on that ship except one man had no more hope. But one man had faith. And faith is expectation. Oh, shoo. okay. So our hope that would be, we would be saved was finally given up, not by Paul. Verse 21, but after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, men, you should have listened to me. <laughs> Did Paul really say that? Paul just opened up in his mouth and said, mm -hmm. I told you so. You should have listened to what I said. But your flesh drove you. Somebody say, help me, Jesus. There's help for us, amen? Somebody say, it's called faith. So he said, men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. <laughs> See, now Paul got a platform. He said, I warned you ahead of time this was coming. Yeah. Now you know it's here. You better listen to me now. Yeah. Somebody said, that's faith. that's faith. Because faith doesn't leave you blind. Yeah. Faith don't leave you blind. Amen. Faith lets you know what's coming. Yeah. So you can prepare for what's coming. And I'm telling you, there is a flood that is coming. Yeah. I'm talking about a financial flood. Yeah. Hey, I'm talking about a financial flood, which means God told me to tell you, prepare yourself. But not like carnal people, but prepare yourself in faith. There'll be many Christians that aren't prepared for this. And just as fast as it came is going to be as fast as it goes. But them that hear the Holy Ghost are going to know what to do when money begins to pour. Listen, I prophesy who was here Saturday. Who was here Saturday? What did the Lord say? Somebody going to get $5,000. Already, ha already happened. Already happened. They said, Pastor, look, here's the picture of the check that just came. Bow, five thousand dollars the Lord had me call it on purpose 
So your faith will grow and know that God's shifting things on your behalf. Oh my God. Somebody ain't happy. Somebody ain't happy. You know what I mean? Oh my God. So now he said, I urge you take heart. In other words, you better listen to me now. If you don't listen to me now, this is what he said. There will be no loss of life. But look at what he says. I now, and now I urge you to take heart. Mm-hmm. You know, heart represents your spirit. In other words, you better listen to me, and you better listen to me with your spirit, man. Because if you don't hear me with your spirit and you don't obey me and follow me through this thing, then this word is not going to work for you. He said, take heart. Grab a hold of what I'm about to tell you. Even though this looks so bad, ain't nobody going to die. As long as you stay with me. Oh, that's what he says. Watch. Oh, he says it. For there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night. Somebody say an angel. So an angel of God appeared to Paul in the middle of a storm. Why? To release a word. (laughs) There stood by me this night an angel of God to whom? Whom I belong, and this is his testimony. I belong to him, and I serve him. That's why he sent an angel. There are a lot of people that belong to God, but a lot of people don't serve him, and therefore no angel going to come. But until you become a servant of God, then God sends his servants for you. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Say, I'm a servant now. (laughs) Whatever you need, Lord. That's what I am. It says, for there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So is it fair to say that everybody that was riding with Paul was going to live? Because that's what God said. God said, The angel said that God has given you all those who sail with you. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Because some people like to sail alone. (laughs) Yeah. I think I lost about 15% of the people. Most people like to sail by themselves. I got this. Pastor, I got it, man. I got it. Somebody called me today. I ain't going to name you. Called me today. As soon as they called me, I saw a vision. When I saw the vision, they asked me a question. I said, I already got the answer because this is what I saw. And it brought instant peace. I said, thank you. That's what I needed to see. Because I was questioning what I needed to do about this thing because this thing is an important decision. I said, this is the person's name and this is it. This is what you're going to do. <laughs> Why? Because you don't sail alone. I said, you don't sail by yourself. You have a spirit guide to help you get to the place God has ordained you to be. The angel said to Paul, listen, you are going to be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So verse 25 says, therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God. Ah, I love this verse. So faith comes by hearing. So Paul had boldness to stand up in the middle of the storm, rebuke the people. Yeah? You know, the rebuke is, you should have listened to me. Now is your opportunity to listen to me. That comes by faith. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. You see, when people don't say stuff like that, it's because they don't have faith. Because faith causes you to be bold. Because faith is, it's like you see it. You see it. 
So when that angel came to him, the angel of the Lord gave him the word of God. He said, this is what God is saying to you, Paul. And that's where Paul got faith to stand up and take control of everything. In the beginning, he said, I perceive this is not going to end well. We should not go. He said, I have an unction in me that this is not right. Something moving in my spirit saying, don't, no, no, no. Huh? My spirit's going, ah, mm -mm, something ain't right. Don't do it. Right? <laughs> but it shifted from some don't feel right with this to the word of the Lord, which caused him to be bold enough to speak to a soldier who had authority. In fact, the scripture says they were going to kill all the prisoners in fear of losing them. You know why? Because if a Roman soldier lost a prisoner, it would be his life for the prisoners. If a prisoner escapes and you're a Roman soldier, your uh, boss would kill you because you lost a prisoner. Go read it. It's all through your Bible. There's another place. You know? There's another place where Paul, Paul, the earthquake comes and everything shifts and then all the prisoners or the doors are open and the, and, the, and, the, and the one who was in charge was about to kill himself. And Paul said, stop, we're all still here. Why? Because if they would have lost a prisoner, it would have been their life. So here Paul has the audacity or the boldness by faith to speak to people who have the power to kill him. Just like Jesus. <laughs> because he said, listen to me. Listen to me this time. Ain't nobody going to lose their life. Ain't nobody going to lose their life. Are you with me? So he says, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told to me. Check this out. You're in a storm. Everything's falling apart. All the cargo's being tossed off. The ship is breaking. And God sends an angel to talk to you. And says, listen, because you're on this boat, ain't nobody going to die. Because you have to be somewhere. Oh, See, I, I'm looking for people who need to be somewhere. I'm looking for people who have a destination and a destiny. Hey, that I got to be somewhere. And no matter what happens to me, he got, I said, tell him, God will even send an angel to give me a word. So he said, just as it was told me. Now, if you ever were on a ship in a hurricane, are you here? Everybody look at everybody. All hope was lost. Everybody about to die. But one man stands up and said, look here, ain't nobody gonna die. That comes because faith is in you. But that faith came because of the word of the Lord. Oh, I wish somebody say, talk to me, God. Just release that word. That word that produces faith in me that I'll never be broke another day in my life. Hey. That even when the bank wants your stuff, you're like, ha, 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 ha. You can't have none of it. <laughs> I remember one day we went through this season, man. Oh, God, it was time, time. We went through this one season, and I was distraught, and I was sick of the Lord. I said, God, I need help, man. This thing just, we were in a storm like this. So I, I said, God, I'm done, man. I, I got two trucks that I just, I can't deal with no more. So I cried out to God. I said, God, I don't care. Just tell me what to do, and I'll do it, because I ain't going to live my life like this. You delivered me. You brought me out, and I am not going to live like this. Yeah, you, you hear me? 
And in that moment, God spoke to me. He said, give them back. I looked at my wife. I said, yep, give me the bank. I called the bank. I said, sister, uh, Pamela, that's her name. I said, Pamela, this is Nathan. I have two trucks by your bank. And I'm four months behind on both of them. And I know you're going to come get them. I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to wash them, clean them, make them look brand new, and take them to you. Because that's what God told me. She said, no, you're not. I said, I said, uh, excuse me? She said, Mr. Sloan, we don't want your trucks. I said, what you want then? She said, give me five minutes, I'll call you back. She hung on the phone, called me back. She said, I refinanced everything. Bring me $250 instead of $5,000. Are you here? Only God who gives you instructions in the middle of the storm break you out. Talk about get broke out. We were broke out. I mean, we broke out. I said, I got $250. I'm going to send to you right now. Don't worry about it. I'm going to send that $250. She said, no problem. I even give you an extra month to pay. And by the way, you know, since we refinanced it, you're not paying like $1,000 a month like you were. She said, all you need to pay is like, I think it was like $385. I said, sold. So, my God. Hallelujah. Both them things got paid off. We gave one away. I, I, uh, yeah, long story. I ain't going to tell you the whole story. Huh? Just like that. Why? Because when God speaks to you, faith comes in you. And when faith comes in you, there's a boldness to act. On what God said. And you're not afraid to move. You're not afraid to go. Ain't nobody hold you back. Once God speaks to you. Nothing can stop you. Oh my God. Well, most Christians are. Well I hope so. You can't be in I hope so. Because faith doesn't leave you in I hope so. Mm. Somebody say glory. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, I, I think I'm going to just leave you right there. Somebody say, I believe God. You see, this confession of I believe God came because God's word showed up. When God's word showed up in the midst of an uneducated situation, you know what I mean? Y'all don't know what I mean. I'm going to go talk to these people over here. That means... That means you couldn't put pencil to paper and educate yourself out of a hurricane when your ship falling apart. There's no education out of that thing. But there's shown up a revelation. And that revelation comes by the word of God. And God manifests himself and holds all these people. <laughs> you know, the Bible says even later, and I, I'm not going to read it all. But, but these fellas that were taking the boat, you know, the, the little dinghy. We're going to get in the dinghy and we're going to get off this big ship so we don't die. And they're about to jump in the boat. Paul said, you tell them they got to stay with me. That's exactly what Paul said. He said, if they get off this boat, they're going to die. So the centurion soldier cut the boat loose. Everybody got a lifeline. Oh, I'll preach it. Everybody got a lifeline. Everybody got a little exit, a little escape, a little way out. God said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There is no other way out except by through me. I was like, look, if you, if you let these folks try to get off the boat, they're going to die when they get off the boat. But if they stay on this ship, even though it looks like it's going to fall apart, their life will be saved. what we got in Christianity. We got so many lifeboats. Somebody say, not no more. I got one ship 
and his name is Jesus. I don't need no lifeboats. I just need Jesus. And recognize I need him now. I need him every day. I need him to go to bed. I need him to wake up. I need him to eat. I need him to drink. I need him every moment, every day. When I go to work, when I come home, hey, when I put my head down, I need him. Lift your hands to the Lord. Say, Lord, I hunger for you. I changed my mind. All I need is you. I need you to speak to me. I need you to show me. I need you to reveal your word to me. God, even if you have to visit me in my dreams, come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come talk to me. Come show me. Time to, it's times that the Christians now begin to live by the spirit and get out of the carnal nature of education about God. This is the hour God wants to use every single one of you in the realm of the spirit. God wants to do things through you that's going to shock you and shock this nation. Mm. You know, it's funny. I had a prophet from South Africa that I met. You know, him, Barry. And while, while I was in the back, I don't know why I was just cleaning up some things in my, my, my notepad on my phone. And I ran across this and I thought, my God, this, this prophetic word came. <sighs> let me see if I can pull the date. I'm going to let you go here. I don't think I can get the date. Anyway, <laughs> this prophetic word. It says, lands will be given all over the United States will be given to you. <laughs> Same man who walked up to me and prophesied the vision that I have for this ministry. Called it out, building by building. Airport, hotel. The entire vision, he started saying, man of God, God has visited you. This is the vision that he gave you. Bah, 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 bah. And I brought that vision to him the next day. I said, here it is. I rolled it out. He said, you need to add an airport because you're going to build these all around the United States. I'm like, my God. God don't even know me. I met him in one meeting. Flew all the way from South Africa to prophesy. But you know what he said here? A suddenly anointing. He said, there's a suddenly anointing that is coming on your life. Do you know what that is? That suddenly is, I once was blinded, but now I see. Suddenly, I got my sight. Suddenly, I'm no more sick. Suddenly, I'm no more broke. Suddenly. And then he said, you'll be known throughout the city of Houston. And then he began to name other states. I'm like, I'm minding my business, waking people up. I just want people to be awake. I'm minding my business like, you know, like Paul Revere. Wake up! Jesus is coming. Wake up! Jesus is coming. And I'm riding my horse right now. Jesus is coming! Wake up! It's never about wanting your name known. It's always about his name being known. You hear me? If you want your name known, you better, you better repent and humble yourself. You want his name known. When you get that heart, then he'll make your name known because you make his name known. Are you here? So revival is here. I said revival is here. Amen. So what is revival? I'm, I'm finished right now. Get, get up there. Hurry. What is revival? 
that that was dead comes alive. That that was missing is found. You know, Saul had a revival. Not, not Paul, but Saul. King Saul had a revival when he met the prophet. When he went to find his daddy's donkeys, he met the prophet. His life was touched by revival. He was a donkey keeper. But when he, when he met the prophet, in that moment, he was no longer a donkey keeper because the prophet anointed him as king. And so he was no longer a keeper of donkeys, but a king. And his life was hit by revival because he wasn't even a prophet and he wasn't even a worshiper. But when he met the prophet, the fire that was upon the prophet hit Saul. And the Bible says that he followed what the prophet said in the beginning. When he followed what the prophet said, the Bible says he turned into another man and began to prophesy like he never prophesied before. How? Because what was on the prophet hit him and there was revival in Samuel. Samuel was a revivalist. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You say, what happened to Saul? He stopped listening to the prophet which is a representation of the Holy Spirit. He stopped listening to the Holy Ghost. He stopped obeying the Holy Ghost. And as soon as he stopped obeying the Holy Ghost, the kingdom was stripped from him. And Samuel represents the Holy Ghost in that because he was fire. The church has stopped listening to the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, not me no more. I'm seeking him more than ever. I'm praying like never before. Hey. I'm worshiping like never before. Like never before. I am before. catching on fire. In Jesus' name, stand to your feet. That's what I got for you today. Woo. So deliverance is here. Revival is here. Abundance is here. <laughs> your victory is here. Step into your victory. Step into your own revival with the Holy Spirit step into that place of abundance step into that place of obedience listening to the Holy Ghost Father I thank you for your word that we believe what you say by the spirit and the word we take it we receive it and we see it oh God Today I decree and declare over all the hearers, everyone that has an ear to hear in this place, that tonight their eyes are opened, their life has changed. They hear you like they've never heard you before. They recognize the unction of the Holy Spirit like never before. The Holy Ghost, lead them, guide them according to the Word of God. Shakaringa. Take them into their fortune take them into their healing ground take them into their deliverance take them into their kingship oh God and I thank you that they hear your voice and another they do not follow oh God this is the hour in which you are still speaking and delivering your people from the bondages of Egypt from the bondages of Babylon and God we receive it today and we thank you that we'll never be broke another day in our life, oh God. We are not slaves to a system, but we are owners and kings in a kingdom, oh God. And we thank you for it tonight. We thank you for it. We receive it by faith. Somebody, I wish somebody say, I receive it by faith. I receive. I wish somebody say, I receive it by faith right now. I receive. I take it by faith right now. And the Holy Spirit is already leading me. The Holy Ghost is already showing me. The Holy Ghost is already talking to me. The Holy Ghost is already on me. There's an anointing all over you. Hallelujah. I'm breaking out. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you blessed that you received that word tonight? Tell your neighbor, I got faith. You got faith? Yes.
Tell them, I believe God. You believe God? God, you believe God. Even if I don't understand some things, I still believe what he says. <laughs> Woo. Faith is trust. And if God says it, you trust him, that settles it. Even if you don't understand how it's going to come to pass. Amen. So, Father, we just bless you. We bless you. That you're pouring out your spirit upon your people. And we thank you, oh God, that their lives are changed, their children's are changed, their, their mentality is changed, and you're leading them every day. They are empowered to prosper, empowered to take over, empowered to become owners of what you say belongs to them, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just worship the Lord, Mike. I bless you. If you need prayer, I'll pray with you. I need but we're just going to worship Jesus. the Lord. And then I release you today. I bless you. Come to if you need prayer, I'll pray for rescue. you. Tell me where else shall I go? No other name by which I am saved Lord capture me with grace I need you Jesus come to my rescue I am saved Lord came to me with your amazing grace and I will follow you this world has nothing for me I will follow you this world has nothing for me I made up my mind to follow you. This world has nothing for me. I'm going to follow you. This world has nothing for me. Nothing for me. I need you, Jesus. Come to my rescue. Tell me where, where can I go? No other name by which I am safe. Lord, capture me with your, your amazing grace. I need you, Jesus. I need you. Jesus, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Come to my rescue. Where, where shall I go? No other name. Which I am safe, Lord, come to me with your amazing grace. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I made up my mind to follow you. I'm tired of my evil ways, Lord. I, I'm going to follow you, God. No matter what, no matter where, no matter what it looks like. I need 
Saturday night when God was call, calling names. It wasn't a Saturday night. He was calling names of people that you, you they weren't here, but you were an extension of them. You, what, you, you weren't here Saturday. No, I, was not here. I, I was not here, but I was in my father's in law house, John Sr., with my husband, Johnny Jr., and my daughter, Alex. Wow. Whoa. Every one of them. Wow. Listen, I'm telling you, the spirit of God is moving. Oh, and I got a testimony. My God. My mother has been asking me to pray for this preacher. More fire, more fire, more fire, more fire. Oh, yeah, that thing is leaving your body. I said it's leaving your body right now. we're not limited to this building I promise you that I spoke to my mom Monday she said there's a pastor and now mom if you're listening I'm gonna call him tomorrow a pastor that she has been wanting me to pray for and a friend of our family has been calling him and speaking faith into him and keeps talking to him about this ministry that this man of God is going to go pray for him. You want to know what happened, Mom? You want to know what happened? That man has been calling from Wichita Falls to Santa Fe, Texas, and just ministering to him for healing. Am I right? You were at the table. This Saturday, the Holy Ghost went from this house to his house. And touched him and he got up out of the wheelchair went to his church for the first time and I don't know I don't know I don't know how many years of time she said I didn't catch the time I just was like oh my god and the man of God called from Wichita and said it's because of the anointing that was in this house went to that place and took him up out of the wheelchair I gotta tell somebody. So the, the Lord in you has inspired me because I, I, I know what you're doing. 
when the Lord has inspired me, this, this prophetic conference, he told me, you need to get a thousand of these things and put them on your altar as points of contact because you have inspired me as all those people being set free in Brazil and here you are again. Stand right here. I gotta obey the Holy Ghost. The Lord said, Bring it right here. All right. Just stand right there. You're gonna take it back. Let, let me tell you a story. When we first began to listen to the Lord and follow Him and understood that, my God, this is what we're supposed to have been doing a long time ago. I took a vacation with a friend. I didn't know. But the friend had a, I knew he had a baby, but I didn't know anything about the baby. He was just a young boy, just like this, young boy. And he had a massive lump on the back of his head. I think he was about the same age. He was, he was just months old, like nine, ten months old, somewhere in there. And he had a massive, massive lump on the back of his head. And they left the baby with the mother-in-law to take care of the baby because they didn't want to travel with the baby. So we all went out of town. And he asked me. While we were driving, he was talking to me. And, and I'm in an RV, and I'm driving the RV, and he's sitting there, and he's crying. He said, man, I don't know what to do. I'm scared about my son. I said, really? He said, yeah, my son has this big knot, and we're, we're scared to take him to the doctor because we, we don't want to hear bad news. We don't know what to do. In the moment, this is what I was preaching earlier. In the moment, the Lord spoke to me. You know what the Lord said to me? He said, in that moment, I, I'm driving, and he says, tell him this right now. And this is the word of the Lord. If you get your family in order by 78%, that thing's going to disappear. <sighs> you know what happened? He got off the RV, got in his truck, drove to the mountain, took his wife and his children and said, let's get on our knees. We're going to recommit our life to Jesus Christ. They recommitted their life to Jesus Christ. Nobody's going to die fire they recommitted their life to Christ we went two weeks they went one week he drove back home while he was driving back home his mama called him screaming screaming oh my god I don't know what happened to your boy but I went to take him a bath in my sink and when I began to wash his hair that thing went poof in my hand fire so that is nothing And do you know how it came? By a word. Come on, worship the Lord, my.
for my nephew on Saturday, Johnny, um, he had cancer. Um, he just sent this while we were in service earlier. And I can't tell exactly on the other side on here what, I know one of them was for his cells, but he said these numbers were very, very high when he got out of prison, okay? So the first one was at a 620 and he went, I think, a couple days ago. And today, he, when I spoke to him, he was at the doctors. They were doing some more testing. And it dropped all the way to 177, which he said that it hadn't dropped until now. 
and then the other one was 2,889 and it dropped all the way down to 71. <laughs> Woo! And he wow. heard your message, he heard it because I send it, I send it to him and so he saw it at four o'clock this morning. He said he, he, felt like he was here in service and you were calling him. There's no distance in the spirit. There's no distance in the spirit. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on. That's power. I mean, my God, that's power. Can you imagine your families? Your children? Your stuff? My God knows your name, everything about you, what's going on. And all he needs is faith to use. My God, come on, worship the Lord. Hallelujah. that are happening right now my god he's so wonderful he's so amazing there's nothing impossible with our god our god can touch people even that aren't here that are connected to you heal them my god father we thank you we don't take it lightly oh god for your grace that is upon this ministry upon our lives the word of the Lord to us oh God we do not take it lightly we thank you and we believe you for more oh God we believe you to shake this region shake this nation God we believe you for revival from the head down oh God we thank you oh God touch every ministry touch every pastor catch them on fire father let your name be great, oh God. Let them know that there is a God who still lives and who still speaks and who still sets free, oh God. For that, we give you thanks and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give a shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. They say we love you. We'll see you Saturday. Saturday, you're free to go. And don't forget the food pantry Saturday morning, amen. Thank you for your service.